peace is such a wonderful thing and it's almost become throughout the years at different points in different cultures something that's a trendy thing in the 60s so it was the peace as an anti-war and God speaks about peace a lot I don't know a lot of peace scriptures but I know that my God is described as a prince of peace it says uh, hundreds of years before our Lord came in the flesh it says unto us a child is given unto us a son is born or worse that effect I might have crossed that up but and his name shall be wonderful counselor almighty God the everlasting father prince of peace and I've always desired peace and and some people say that I have an ego if I say that we all desire peace. Oh, that's just you, Mark. Not everyone desires peace. Maybe a lot of people do. Not everyone does. And uh, I don't know that for a fact, but I do believe there are certain things we all universally share. And you look at people, and it seems they, they want anything but peace. They go to the house of the Prince of Peace, as you might call it, because they call these buildings the house of God. And God is the Prince of Peace. It makes me wonder. Because I spent a lot of time in the world going to stadiums, a couple concerts, but many, many stadiums which are basically like concert halls. And it's anything but peace in those places, I can guarantee you. And I wanted to go and worship my team and uh, or players or whatever it was. And it was too noisy for me even before I came to know or even seek God. And I always found it kind of ironic that once I found myself in these buildings, buildings that are ostensibly called the house of the Prince of Peace and they're so unpeaceful they're so they're so frenetic they're so much like the stadiums I used to attend and even louder kind of pause real quick there's a potential non-peaceful moment here as a bug fell on my camera woman but uh, yeah and I was thinking about that notion of peace and that I mentioned the one where he's called the Prince of Peace and also when he was here in the flesh, he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Not as the world. He gives a peace that's not as the world. And as I was saying earlier, the, the house of the Prince of Peace is anything but peaceful it's this, uh, and I'm not saying all of them, all obviously all of them are not rock concerts uh, driving this constant beat of high energy. Uh, I'm not sure what you would call it. I don't call it worship though. It's something, but I don't know what it is. It seems to be the work of man to try to prove something. Because I started seeing these corollaries or these similarities between the world and the body of Christ as as we call ourselves when we gather together and the similarities and in the stadium there's this common bond we would all have we would come together and there was a hero and there was an enemy and we all came to cheer for our hero you know come on you can do it we believe you're gonna do it we're gonna we're gonna have the victory and we're the louder we were the more exuberant we were the more boisterous, the more positive, that we just believe, we just believe our, our, the good guy is going to win. He's going to have the victory. We're all going to share in the victory. And if you're a Christian, I know you know where I'm going because that's what we do when we gather together in these houses. It used to be called the house of prayer. A man went in there once. He was very angry about what was going on. <clears throat> His name was Jesus. And I see similar things going on now not just about the money changers and all that that's hideous enough but in the way we worship we come and we scream and we holler and we try to impress our god so that we can have the victory we say it so he'll have the victory and we'll just share it with him but it's the same thing as what goes on in these houses of worship called basketball stadiums and baseball uh arenas and all these things concert halls it's the exact same thing. I see no difference in it. We're, we're trying to manipulate something to happen on our behalf through our worship. 
and it's it's kind of I, I want to be careful here with my words because I don't want to insult anyone because I've done this for many years myself. I've jumped up and down. I've ran, clapped and hollered and screamed till my my throat was sore and, and conjured up all kinds of emotions and feelings. And I believe now it had nothing to do with the spirit because the spirit is love. He said, I'm going to come back as the spirit of truth to teach you all things. That's what the spirit of truth is for. The spirit of truth is a very uh, coherent spirit one that comes to inform us to teach us so we can grow and, and learn in the grace and knowledge of our lord jesus christ he's our teacher that's how he does that and what happens in these places is so much like the world and what the world does in its worship and even the way it draws things out of you the way it uh, works as a corporation a business a bank a a, uh, a system of extracting things from some people for the benefit of other people all these things were so similar and before you know it the notion of peace is completely lost peace in the obvious sense is in the noise level and all that frenetic energy that's constantly happening and peace just in the heart so as my life has changed and I find I'm attracted I feel like I always was it just there wasn't no real teaching about peace but now as I become removed more from that high energy worship, worldly carnal worship that was going on in those buildings, I'm gravitating more towards peace. So say for instance, I listen to a radio station now that it's just all Jesus, it's just peaceful. Just God, you're so good. Jesus, we love you so much. That's the general tone of all of it. It's all about him. It's all about our Creator. And what could be more peaceful than that? What do you think was going on in the garden? You know, I think about that all the time. What must it have been like? You know, there is these four rivers and everything, and the garden. That's why we like coming out here. There's a peaceful river behind us with the quiet little rapids going, and there's birds chirping everywhere, and squirrels, and creatures, and everything. It's just so peaceful. And I know there's a time and place for any everything, it's just that peace, it seems like it is a universal yearning of the heart, that we all desire this, we all want this. But for some reason, we become convinced that it's not attainable, or it's on the other side, it's somewhere else. Heaven will be peaceful, you know, you're not going to have a rock concert in heaven, but if you want to get there, man, you better just strap it on and go for it, and rock this place, and prove something to your God so that he can bless you. But that's a whole another subject. But I just wanted to talk about peace real quick. And uh, that's it, in Jesus' name.